In the quiet pre-dawn of July 17, 1945, the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean shrouded HMS Implacable in darkness. As the pride of the British Pacific Fleet, she loomed like a ghostly fortress in the water. Below deck, the air buzzed with tension and anticipation. Without warning, the silence was shattered. The deck of Implacable burst into a frenzy of activity as pilots rushed to their aircraft, engines roared to life, and the first glimmers of dawn began to outline the formidable shape of the carrier. Eight fireflies and twelve sea fires, like metallic birds of prey, took to the skies in a relentless assault aimed at the heart of Tokyo. The city below was already bearing the scars of a nation unwilling to yield, its resolve as unbroken as the spirit of those who sought to defend it. Renowned for her robust design and heavy armor that practically shielded all her aircraft, Implacable joined the BPF off the Japanese coasts to avenge the Japanese occupation of the Empire's colonial territories. Day after day, Implacable's aircraft took off to bomb the Japanese home islands, while her crew ferociously fought off wave after wave of the surviving Japanese aircraft. Her guns roared without rest, and no aircraft ever got close enough to attack the crew. Soon, Implacable's aircraft surpassed a thousand sorties in the Pacific, preparing the crew for what was to come with Operation Olympic, the ground invasion of Japan. Tensions were rising in Europe. Germany was once more claiming a place among the world's powers under the leadership of Adolf Hitler and the National Socialist Party. The economy was flourishing, there was no unemployment, and the military had been reinstated. The Kriegsmarine, the Luftwaffe, and the Ground Army were back on their feet and ready to defend the fatherland from the west and east if needed. After harsh negotiations, the United Kingdom had approved allowing the German Navy to exist again. Nonetheless, the Britons soon regretted this choice, with the Kriegsmarine's quick growth becoming a direct threat to the Royal Navy's supremacy of the sea. Consequently, the Royal Navy emitted the 1938 naval program to prepare the naval fleet for a possible clash against the Third Reich. The project called for the expansion and modernization of the Royal Navy in response to the growing threats of Germany, fascist Italy, and to a certain extent, the Japanese Empire. Particular emphasis was put on constructing new battleships and aircraft carriers in recognition of the ever-changing nature of naval warfare, which prioritized air power. As part of the modernization process, existing ships would be fitted with new technologies, weapons, and equipment. Given the threat of German U-boats lurking in the North Sea, the 1938 program also included measures to strengthen anti-submarine capabilities. Germany's annexation of Austria, Czechoslovakia, and other territories increased tensions with France and the United Kingdom, prompting the Royal Navy to quickly develop a new type of aircraft carrier, the Implacable class. An improved version of the illustrious class carriers was planned. The newer ships were designed to be over two knots or four kilometers per hour faster and some tons heavier to carry additional aircraft at the cost of armor. The design parameters were meticulously crafted to adhere to the 23,000 long ton limit set by the Second London Naval Treaty, negotiated between the victors of World War I during peacetime. A fourth steam turbine and shaft were fitted to attain a remarkable top speed of around 32 knots or 59 kilometers per hour. However, compromises were made to accommodate the additional weight of this enhanced propulsion and the expanded air group. The armor thickness of the hangar deck and bulkheads was strategically reduced, a decision that reflected the shifting priorities in carrier design towards speed and aircraft capacity over defensive capabilities. Design D, a modified version of the illustrious design, could carry a supplementary dozen aircraft, making it a total of 48, with the addition of a lower hangar. The Implacable class was 233.6 meters long overall and 222.5 meters at the waterline. Their beam was 29.2 meters, and she had a draft of over 8.9 meters at deep load. Despite the initial design intentions, the Implacable class was overweight for an aircraft carrier and displaced over 32,100 long tons. The carriers required a substantial crew, numbering approximately 2,300 officers and crew members to maintain and operate the floating air bases. British engineers worked hard to maximize the internal space of the aircraft carrier. Initially, the hangar height was only meant to fit the ferry albacore, for which an upper limit of only four meters was set. 
the lower hangar was set to 5 meters to accommodate fighters. However, it was soon discovered that taller aircraft needed more space, leading to a slight height increase. Overall, the armored flight deck had a width of 31 meters and featured a single hydraulic aircraft catapult. The Implacable was also equipped with two lifts on the center line. The final design, Design D, was submitted to the Board of Admiralty in August 1938 and could fit up to 80 aircraft. After weeks of discussions and amendments, it was finally approved on November 17th. Implacable was powered by four Parsons geared steam turbines, with each one driving a single shaft. These turbines utilized steam supplied by eight Admiralty three drum boilers and provided a combined output of 148,000 shaft horsepower. During sea trials, the Implacable ship could carry a maximum of 4,690 long tons of fuel oil, giving her a range of around 6,720 nautical miles at a speed of 20 knots or 37 kilometers per hour. Before the ship was laid down in February 1939, the main armor was raised to over 51 millimeters. Flight deck armor was 76 millimeters thick, and the magazines were protected by armor between 76 and 114 millimeters thick. This robust protection was Implacable's main advantage, covering all the aircraft from above, the sides, and two large bulkheads in an impregnable citadel once the external lifts were fully enclosed. The ship traded off aircraft capacity for armor, a design specification contrary to United States Navy carriers that greatly favored increased fighters instead of armor. The HMS Implacable's arsenal bore similarities to that of the illustrious class vessels, albeit with a notable difference in its anti-aircraft armament, featuring fewer guns. Its primary firepower came from eight twin QF 4.5-inch Mark II dual-purpose guns housed in Mark II twin-gun turrets with distinctive flat roofs. These cannons hurled shells at velocities exceeding 740 meters per second, reaching targets up to 18,000 meters away. For its secondary armament, Implacable was equipped with an array of anti-aircraft guns, five octuple and one quad QF two-pounder pom-pom anti-aircraft guns, totaling 48 barrels, each capable of engaging targets up to 6,200 meters distant. The ship's defensive capabilities were further enhanced by 21 and 61 Ehrlichan 20mm anti-aircraft guns mounted individually for close-range defense. Targeting was aided by four Mark V M-type fire control directors, each outfitted with a Type 285 gunnery radar. The Vickers 2 PDR pom-pom guns were guided by their own Mark IV director and Type 282 gunnery radar. High above, Implacable's tripod mast was equipped with a Type 293 target indicator radar, complemented by the Type 277 radar mounted on the bridge for surface search and height finding. The ship's journey from blueprint to battle ready began in February 1939 at the Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company. However, her construction faced delays in 1940 and 41 as resources were diverted to prioritize vessels critical for the Battle of the Atlantic, pitting the Royal Navy against the Kriegsmarine. It was December 1942 when Princess Elizabeth christened the carrier, launching her into the waters. Implacable was officially commissioned into service in May 1944 amid preparations for Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of France. After completing sea trials, she entered the conflict in August 1944. Equipped with a versatile air group comprising 24 Barracudas, 12 Fireflies, 12 Hellcats, and 12 Seafires. Implacable's inaugural mission in combat was initiated in October 1944. It was tasked with tracking down the battleship Tirpitz, recently sighted departing Kafjord, Norway. Sailing from Scapa Flow on October 16th, alongside HMS Bellona and a contingent of destroyers, including HMS Venus, Barulam, Cassandra, Cambrian, Caprice, Savage, and Scourge, Implacable's aircraft successfully located Tirpitz. However, the lack of fighter escort for the bombers meant the German battleship remained unscathed. In the Arctic's unforgiving chill, HMS Implacable carved a path back to Tromsø as part of Operation Athletic. The floating fortress bore a fearsome cargo, a squadron of supermarine Spitfires. Implacable's aviators took to the skies to neutralize the enemy's lifelines. In a series of swift assaults, six German vessels were sent to the depths, bearing the scars of their fury. 
Admiral Sir Henry Ruthven Moore set his sights on the waters near Alston Island, his flag billowing aboard the Implacable. Their quarry was a convoy, unsuspecting and laden. The hunt was merciless. Two merchantmen, including the ill-fated MS Rigget, were sent to their watery graves, while six others limped away, battered and bruised. The sinking resulted in more than 2,500 fatalities. As December started, Vice Admiral Sir Frederick Darienpool Hamilton took up the mantle, his flag unfurled for another mine-laying sortie. Amidst this relentless campaign, the Fireflies aboard the Implacable claimed a German minesweeper as their prize. On December 15th, as winter's grip tightened, the Implacable sought refuge in Roseth, her body worn but unbroken. Here, she underwent a transformation, her arsenal fortified to unleash hellfire upon the kamikaze threats in the Pacific. After a few months, on March 10, 1945, the overhaul of HMS Implacable was completed, and she was assigned to the 801, 828, 880, and 1771 squadrons. Her decks were now home to the largest air group ever assembled on a British carrier, 48 Sea Fires, 21 Avengers, and 12 Fireflies. Implacable departed late in the month and went through the Suez Canal, reaching Port Said on March 25th. However, a strong gust of wind nearly beached the carrier during the crossing, and it took hours for the escorting tugboats to pull her off. Fortunately, the undamaged ship proceeded to Sydney, where it arrived in May 1945. The crew was briefly rested after the breaking news announcing the war's end in Europe. Still, there was more fighting to be done in the Pacific against the Empire of Japan. On May 29th, HMS Implacable made her way to the British Pacific Fleet's primary base at Manus Island in the Admiralty Islands, stepping into her role as the flagship for Rear Admiral Sir Patrick Brind. This pivotal position set the stage for Operation Inmate, a bold initiative aimed at seizing control of Truk and the Caroline Islands through a concentrated, decisive assault. Launched on June 14th, the operation saw Implacable's aircraft execute 113 offensive sorties over two days. Remarkably, these attacks resulted in the loss of just one sea fire before the carrier returned to Manus Island for resupply. In a strategic push towards the Japanese mainland, the British Pacific Fleet embarked on July 6th, reaching the coast by July 16th with a mission of retribution. Despite the challenges posed by adverse weather, the fleet's aircraft, including eight fireflies and 12 sea fires, launched an attack near Tokyo. Still, they rallied the next day, pinpointing most of their targets. The fleet stormed Osaka and reached the Inland Sea, where it encountered and damaged the escort carrier Kayo. After a vital replenishment mission, the fleet resumed its aerial onslaught from July 28th to 30th. They hunted down and sank the IJN transport ship Okinawa near the Mayuzuru arsenal. Hampered by inclement weather and frequent refueling, many missions were deferred until the atomic bomb dropped over Hiroshima. On August 9th, the fleet resumed its airborne operations, launching 94 Sea Fire sorties that ravaged northern Honshu and southern Hokkaido, albeit at the cost of two Sea Fires. The offensive on the 10th proved devastating for the enemy, sinking two warships and numerous merchant vessels, and destroying locomotives and grounded aircraft, among other targets. As HMS Implacable and the fleet returned to Manus Island on August 12th, the air was filled with anticipation and hope. This sentiment was realized on August 15th, when the news of Japan's surrender was received. HMS Implacable was refitted following the end of the war, and was prepared to accommodate Allied prisoners of war captured by the Japanese. The carrier arrived in Manila Bay on September 25, 1945, and loaded over 2,000 American, Canadian, and British POWs. Throughout the year, she gathered and delivered troops from the Pacific to Europe. She was briefly decommissioned during the early stages of the Cold War, but tensions with the Soviet Union led to her recommission in 1952 to become the flagship of the Home Fleet Training Squadron. Nevertheless, she never saw combat after World War II, and her role was limited to military exercises with partner nations. HMS Implacable was decommissioned in September 1954 and scrapped a year later after the Royal Navy found no more use for her.